Jeep is parked outside. It runs and drives, but I need to put my old crank position sensor in. But to do that, I gotta run a bracket because mine is a little different than the, gotta put the front drive shaft in, the windshield wiper tank in. I put a hole in it um, like a year ago. I'm, uh, I just patched it up. So hopefully that holds. I gotta clean the uh, transfer case skid plate and put that in. And then I'm gonna clean the floors. And then, yeah, the Jeep should be done here soon. So, I figured this is gonna be kind of a boring video because it's just buttoning stuff up. But I did put the washer tank back on and I think when I patched it, I didn't patch it good enough. So it's leaking water out the tank, but that's fine. I can find a replacement later. Time to remove the... Okay, that was cool. But time to remove the transmission cooler line so let's see looks simple i had a bright idea of just cutting it since i couldn't get the line off and yes right there all over me it's fine i do dumb shit and dumb shit happens whatever <coughs> So today, I want to throw the interior back together. So I did put the steering console back in. I just bolted it in. I ran all my lights. I ran the wires, so that's good. Um, I did my USB over here, my base knob right here. So what I'm about to do now is cut this so I can put a shift boot over it. What I'm going to do is cut, let's see cut probably like the middle out and then I'm gonna try to put this shift boot over it and see if it works well I had to remove all the junk from the backside but here's the oh crap finished product may look like I just destroyed it but you'll see my method here in a little bit the reason why I did it so I got a new shift boot. It's a little longer, it's all leather. But before I put that on, you can see places right here, hits. So it hits the steering console and usually it wouldn't be a big deal, but it's actually popping it out of um, first gear if I don't force it in. So I'm about to just trim it a little bit. I can see where it goes in at. I got my carbide bit. So I'm about to just trim it and hopefully it solved my problem. All right, well that was quick and easy. It is in the little notch. Perfect. Now it's time to put the new shift boot on. I had to go back and revise it. What I did is I put wood screws, but I drilled the hole first. Then I cut the wood screw down to like this big and I put it in all four corners so it, the leather wraps around and now it's an eclipse and it should fit now better. Let's see. And that looks way better. I am having problems with it popping up right here, but I'm gonna have to figure something out for that because I really don't wanna be working on this tonight. But for now it's in there. I just gotta get a cover for the shifter. And yeah, and I still gotta deal with that. Um, I just been lazy. I did put the cross member on or the transfer case skid plate. I'm tightening up my four by four shift linkage. And after I do that, I'm about to put the dry shaft on. I did have to cut my shift link because I was running a like custom one from Mountain Vista Fab. Um, I'll put it right here just so you guys can see it. And it, it was too long. So I just noticed my uh, wires for my crank position center and the body harness were touching. So it's kind of hard to see. I just separated them and taped them. Hopefully that fixes the problem. But I already purchased. Give me. 
this is a little adapter so I can use the old one. So I'm gonna put this in because I bought it. So we'll see how it works. If, if it doesn't change anything, I'll go back to this one. But this is my original one with the bracket. So I'm going 73. I changed out the crank position sensor. There's no more sputtering. Um, before with the old transmission, I was flooring it to maintain speed. Now I'm half throttle holding anywhere from 65 to 80 and it feels great. Doesn't feel like I'm lacking power. Doesn't feel like it's struggling to keep up with traffic. Um, the AX15 was a night and day difference. It makes a Jeep just feel way better. Um, especially being on 38s and geared to 513s, it, it's like a night and day difference. Well, I'm gonna put down the phone. Um, I just wanted to record this clip and I'll pick up the phone and record when I get back to the house. All right, got the front drive shaft in the back of the Jeep. It did not fit ever since I put the new transmission in. Um, it's just a little bit too long. I tried getting it in there, but I feel like if I forced it in there and I went off-roading, it would have caused damage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it to this shop called Tad's Drive Shaft, I believe. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow morning to go do that. It's about a 40 minute drive. I'm gonna do it on my way to work. So yeah, I'll post a, a little clip when I get there. Finally made it, about to get the dry shaft out of my Jeep and bring it inside the office. So I dropped my dry shaft off here at um, Tad's dry shaft, really cool guys. Um, he said it should be done by the end of the week. Let me get it there. There we go. And we'll pick it up on Friday. Every time I pull the key out, I gotta play with that over there. See, key's not, and not, won't come out. You gotta move this to get the key out. That's the, the little thing that recognizes it if it's in neutral or park. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get the plastic cover off so I can fix that, but this wouldn't fit in the hole. So what I did is got my grinder with a flap disc, just grinded it down. Now it fits in the hole. So now I can take this plastic off. Well, I left, um, went to go do some stuff with my wife, but Everything taken apart. And I um came back and I realized what's making it what moves. So what I did is I put a self-tapper on this black piece that moves. And I don't want to go all the way into this because I don't know what's on the other side of it. But I just went a little bit in. It kind of pulls it out. But this stops the key now. So it's perfect. So now it works. That's all you have to do. So when you do this, if you ever, if any, if you guys ever swap, um, put the key in uh, this uh, off position and then screw it in. Cause that's the position it needs to be in. Once you screw it in, in that position is good. So yeah, that's it. Now I'm trying to put everything back together. So now I still have this wire and that cord with the pin that used to go on the automatic shifter. What I'm gonna do is, here's it right here. I'm just gonna cut it. Cause I don't need it no more and I don't want it sticking out right there. So I'm gonna cut it and get rid of it. And that was it. 
now my Jeep is done. The only thing I need now is small stuff like this and the front drive shaft, which I already dropped off to the shop. So I know this is a boring one. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the same video as when I put this on, the new shift boot and a few other little things, but hey, it's part of the process, you know? So I'm gonna put all this back together and then, yeah. This is it for this video. I mean, you guys already know how it looks all together, so I'm not even gonna put that in this video, but um, if you haven't already, um, subscribe and like it and comment positive or negative things anything anything helps so um yeah you guys have a good one